Hi Jean-Jacques, thank you for welcoming Bonjour, us uh, in this uh, Pullman Hotel uh, in Paris. Um, you just uh, recently had a new organization uh, yes. in Accor. What will be uh, your role with uh, that uh, organization? Yeah, since uh, January 1st, uh, I am the uh, AP uh, president of the division in Accor, which is uh, regrouping mid-scale, premium and economy brands. So this is the art of what we do at Accor. Huh? This is, uh, 90% of the hotel, 75% of the fee revenue. Um, this is about 18 brands. Out of, by the way, of those 80 brands, you've got the three core brands of the group, which is the uh, Ibis, Novotel, and, uh, and Pullman, constitute uh, close to 50% of the turnover, so very significant. Talking about those brands, uh, I need to pay tribute, in fact, to the people that created those brands about 50 years ago, uh, Monsieur Dubrul, Monsieur Pellisson, and this all the more because as we as we know Mr. Pellisson left us a few weeks ago so just would like to use that uh, introduction in order to pay a special tribute mm -hmm. to those uh, pioneers. Yeah. yeah, they were clear visionary of our, of our industry. Um, it's quite a large uh, scope actually in terms of number of hotels as you just mentioned. Yeah. Um, do you have already uh, done some uh, roadmap for, for the coming years? If, if I were to, to just basically kind of summarize it, we, we have a vision uh, which is that we want hospitality hospitality excellence. We are today hospitality excellence, but we want even more hospitality excellence. We've got the advantage of having a, a team of people, a team of, uh, of people at all levels, whether they are in the headquarters or they are in the hotel, which have an extreme dedication and hence the level of recognition, the level of stickiness, the level of brand equity that we've been able to build over the time on, on our brands. And so that is really at the heart of um, everything we do. As part of the, the strategy and, and what we think we'll do going forward, as the brand are really the heart of what we want to, uh, to push through, the first place that we opened when we went to Asia was Australia. And I think this has been building up. I mean, what matters in brand management is, is length. Mm -hmm. you, you just want to ensure consistency, you just want to ensure progression. And I think we are um, in Australia or in a place like Brazil getting the fruits of having been there for a long time and having developed a deep-rooted tissue mm. of uh, owner and, 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 uh, and the people working for us. That's what pays off. What do you believe will be um, uh, a driver of value creation uh, in terms of development? Uh, because you have those legacy brands uh, that yep. you can uh, leverage the, the historical um, uh, track records, uh, but there is new brands also. Um, yep. uh, and what will be for you the way that you believe you could develop yep. uh, the, the footprint of Accor uh, worldwide? I think we've got uh, workhorses. You know, brands that today generate a lot of um, volume, a lot of businesses. And again, we're back to those those three core brands. It's wider than that, as you know. You also have Movenpick, which is a significant brand. You also have Mercure, which is a significant brand. What I'd say is that post-COVID, what we want is we want to revive those brands, revive those brands a little bit. Why is that? Because the way the end customer would look at a hotel today has changed. It used to be, uh, I'm looking for a room, I'm looking for a shower, and I want to be exactly where I am thinking I will be when I go to this place. Nowadays, things have changed. People were, in fact, burnt by the COVID crisis. They've got pent-up envy to see something different. And so we will revitalize those brands, giving them a little bit more of a lifestyle, um, I would say, tone. Mm -hmm. And that will translate, for example, by a revised F&B approach. You know, you can, you can do better, we can do more on that. And, and people will, will value that. I think, I think that's, that's one thing that comes uh, loud and clear. There is also um, the difficulty to um, you know, find the right financing today on the markets. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the financial crisis is not resolved. And so anything which is around conversion will play a role in development. Accor is by far the large uh, brand which uses the most conversion. About 50% of what we do in openings is coming from conversions. Most of the competitors are to the tune of 25-30%. And it has to do with 
where those brands basically were born. You know, they were born in a place where new build was easy to do. We were born in a place where there is a lot of buildings around us here. We already um, uh, comment uh, a lot uh, the rebound in the activity. We saw yep. that uh, huge frustration for people. We speak about uh, uh, travel revenge. Uh, so so yep. people want to, to go back to explore the world. Yep. Um, taking this new position, having this kind of a result, how you project yourself in the, in the coming years uh, with your roadmap? I think, I think we've got a, a unique opportunity here because the business is strong to surf that wave and be able to get the benefit of all the various strategies, toolbox that were put uh, in place for the last five, seven years. I mean, the growth morphed tremendously. We've been, uh, you know, uh, moving from being uh, very, very French to something which is way more international to something which was very much mechanical, to something which is, as you know, much more balanced, uh, to something which is an asset light. And we've accompanied that with all, which is a program in order to get the right, you know, brand recognition throughout the world. And, and so with all that toolbox, we entered into COVID, which was awful. Now we're getting out of COVID. The business is very strong, continues to be strong. Q1 will be very strong as we all know. And so we just want to serve that wave, use the toolbox and get the benefit of it. So you're in shape for the future. Which, well, in shape for the future. I think one thing which is, um, which uh, I think uh, you, you kind of uh, hinted to and is important, ESG mm. will be even more important than what people may think. Mm. I know there is a lot of talk around it, mm. but in our view, uh, the ESG dimension of everything we do will be uh, paramount to our success. It starts with having the right elements in order to be able to put in place the right strategies. And one of the difficulties that everybody is facing, whatever the industry, but in our industry like in any other, is the lack of data and, and some greenwashing. Mm. In our case, what we decided to do is we decided to do the investment and, and push down to all of our properties some tools in order to measure. There is an old saying that says that if you don't measure, you don't improve. And so we're going to put that carbon tool capture tool throughout all our properties, and that will provide to the asset owner the means to understand where he stands in terms of carbon footprint and hence act. Mm. Once you have the information, you can act and we'll be able to compare, we'll be able to devise what is the right strategy and hence push down some consulting back to the properties. And so I think, I think consulting in the sense of telling people what they can do. And so I think um, measurement is what is missing in something where everybody agrees on what is right. What is right is to do something, but to do what? And so I think measurement will be paramount. What is your mindset uh, for, for this year? Because you, you just arrived in this new role almost, um, getting your, your teams uh, ready. Uh, what is your mindset on a more personal note? Oh, I am, I am quite relaxed, as you can see. Um, why? Because, you know, in the end, we've got everything that kind of lines up. We've got a rebound, which is an extremely good playing ground in order to push things forward. We've got the toolbox, I went through that. And I think we've got the right team, we've got the right spirit, we've got an immense willingness from everybody in this company to prove that they can do their job normally and even better than normally, extraordinarily. And so I think, I think um, you know, all of that combined makes it uh, uh, just a perfect alignment of stars and so, yes, we just have to do it now. And I think we've done, uh, throughout COVID, um, very good work, um, you know, working with our partners, finding the solutions uh, when there were no people, then when there were all kinds of um, medical restrictions. And so we've done a good job at that. And, and I think we, we just have to continue that positive momentum and work with those partners and, and, and deliver value. Thank you, Jean-Jacques. Thank you.